Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to my responsive design tutorial and I decided to make this video because there were quite a few guys that requested this on Facebook and also in the comment section below my videos. So if you guys want to request a video, go ahead and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below and I'm going to do my best to help you guys and if you guys want to know how you can help me then leaving a comment, liking or sharing the video is really going to help and also uh, if you watch the video the entire way through on YouTube instead of downloading it and watching it on your computer that helps me with something called audience retention. But I do understand that some of you guys watch the video, uh, download it and watch it because internet can be expensive in some places or some parts of the world so I do understand if you do download these videos it's just it's much better for you to watch the video on YouTube because it helps me okay but let's actually get started with this responsive design tutorial okay and I've got some content on the web page already so that we can save time uh, but it's uh, not really complicated stuff. It's just a div with an ID of container. And that div with the ID of container has two style rules. The width is set to 960 pixels and the margin is set to auto. Okay, so what this means is we have a 960 pixel container that is centered in the middle of the browser. Okay, then taking a look at what's inside this container we have an image which acts as a banner and that takes up the entire width of our container uh, and I'm going to show you guys what that image looks like in just a second then we've also got our section which is has an ID of left column and that has just some left column dummy content same thing with the right column uh, this is an aside tag with an ID of right column if we take a look at the style rules for those We've got a width of 700 pixels and the left column is floated left. The right column has a width of 260 pixels and it's also floated left which means that it appears next to my left column and 260 pixels plus 700 pixels is equal to 960 pixels. So these two columns when appearing next to each other take up the entire width of my container. Okay then I also gave them background colors just so we can differentiate between the left column and the right column. So if we run this in Firefox, okay, you can see we've got this big banner at the top of the page and then we've got our left column and we've got our right column. Uh, so in order to make this design responsive, we're going to take a look at a new tool in Firefox. So I'm going to go to Tools, Web Developer, Responsive Design View as you can see the keyboard shortcut is Control shift m so go ahead and hit that and you'll get um, these little uh, handles on the side of the page over here that you can use to scale the actual screen size and there's also a whole bunch of presets up here and you can use this to kind of determine um, how your website is going to look on certain screen sizes like a phone or a tablet etc. Okay so now let's go over to uh, notepad and in my index file I want to add a meta tag. Now this meta tag you probably don't need when you're working on your computer designing and testing this but if you do want your phone or your uh, website to respond on a phone and actually um, change sizes then this meta tag is necessary. So go ahead and add in this meta tag, so meta, and give it a name of viewport. And by viewport, we're talking about the actual screen size. And we're going to say content is equal to width. And this is actually quite a long story here, but width is equal to device uh, width, comma, initial scale is equal to 1.0 okay and it needs to be just like that now by 
doing this, we're telling the uh, phone or we're telling the iPad or the tablet or whatever is trying to access this website that the content needs to be equal to the width um, of the device width, okay? So whatever your phone width is, that is the width of this website or that's the uh, width that you must display for this website, okay? An initial scale of 1.0 just means do not scale this website up or down uh, to try and fit the content, just um, the, the content is actually going to fit the actual device. So uh, let's go over to CSS now and use something called a media query to make our website respond to phones and stuff. So, uh, to use a media query, you're going to type in the word at media screen and open up brackets max width and 900. Well, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm looking at my notes, but I'm focusing on uh, that at the same time. So, um, I'll explain why I'm going to put 959 pixels in here in just a second, but I just want to mention to you guys that your code needs to look exactly like that, okay? If you try and leave out a space, so like I left out a space like this, the website doesn't work anymore, doesn't respond. So this thing is so fussy that even the spaces have to be correct, okay? And I'm gonna give this a max width of 959 pixels and um, Basically, what we're saying here is uh, as soon as our website gets to 959 pixels, we're going to display whatever CSS rules are inside of this media screen. And the reason why I'm using 959 pixels is because my container is 960 pixels. So uh, everything bigger than 960 pixels is going to display my web page uh, like this. So we're going to have the web page in the middle and it's going to be centered. But as soon as we get to 959 pixels, you can see we start cutting off part of our web page. Uh, and we want to try fix that. So uh, 959 pixels, we're going to make our website start scaling. So we're going to grab this container over here and instead of the container having a width of 960 pixels, we just want this container to take up the full width of whatever the screen width is at that time. So we're going to say width 100%. Okay, and this means that uh, whatever the screen width is, this container is going to go ahead and try and fit that width. Okay. Then I'm going to grab this uh, left column over here and we're going to give this a style rule as well because um, we don't want to work with pixels anymore. We need to work with percentages. So I'm going to grab uh, this width and I'm going to give that a percentage of 70%. And what that means is this left column now takes up 70% of whatever width is left um, for it to take up. And we're going to do the same thing with the right column. So I'm going to copy that and just paste that down here. Okay. And I'm going to give that a width of 30% because we want the left column and the right column to still appear next to each other uh, because they're still going to be floated left uh, because of these two rules, these two styling rules. Okay. And um, 70 plus 30 is equal to 100. So... Um, these two columns will together make up 100% and take up the entire width of our container. So uh, save that now, jump over to Firefox, click refresh. And um, as you can see now, when I start scaling this, my left column and my right column start scaling along with the actual web page. So this is pretty cool, but my image as you can see, is still getting cut out in the background. And we need to fix that. So I'm going to uh, go back to Notepad and I'm going to grab this image by its image tag. So image 
and I'm going to give that a width as well so width of 100 percent and this means that our image can only be as wide as the container that it is within and our container over here also has a width of 100 percent so if we go over to Firefox click refresh and start scaling this down now you can see our image scales with the web page so we now have a responsive website uh, which is pretty cool but um, what happens when we get to like a really small screen size over here you can see that we're now only fitting maybe like uh, two to three words per line and um, that's not great in this column so it would probably be better to make this column appear beneath the left column okay so in other words they don't become left and right columns anymore and to do that we're going to grab this uh, media screen rule and for the width I'm going to set this equal to 640 pixels um, so this rule kind of works for all the tablets because anything smaller than 959 pixels will uh, scale down um, and this will work for all pretty much all of the tablets but um, for this rule over here <laughs> sorry squeaker for this rule um, 640 pixels is pretty much the same uh, region where we start working with phones like the iPhone 5 or the iPhone 4 and uh, some Android phones like the Samsung Galaxy S3 uh, or S5 or something okay and for this uh, we want to actually make these columns over here appear beneath each other so I'm gonna grab these two columns uh, and I'm just gonna paste them down here and if I give this a width of 100 percent and I give my right column a width of 100 percent then it means that 100 and 100 are now bigger than the actual container so these two will appear beneath each other instead of next to each other so if we go over to uh, Firefox and we click refresh over here and we start scaling this down watch what happens when we get to 640 pixels so I'm going to scale this down and there we go as soon as we get to 640 pixels those two divs or um, the section and the aside start appearing beneath each other okay and as we scale this down uh, they just get thicker and thicker as the um, content scales to fit as well okay and you know that's pretty cool but what happens if uh, for some reason the screen goes like that now we've only got one word per line and this is you know pretty stupid in my opinion and I think the smallest screen size that we actually really need to cater for is around 320 pixels which is about here okay and 320 pixels is basically like the old iPhone 3 and uh, those kinds of phones so once we get to 320 pixels we don't really want our website to scale down any further because it just starts looking uh, pretty bad uh, so in that case the user will have to use their thumb and you know try you know maneuver around the website or scale the website uh, as such okay so I'm gonna go back here and we're gonna create another media screen rule and I'm going to uh, for this just give my content my container a width of 320 pixels so control V so when the screen gets to 320 pixels we want our container to also have the exact same width of 320 pixels okay and what this means is that um, the website can be no smaller than 320 pixels so if I click refresh over here and we start right from afresh we've got computers and some of the bigger tablets will see a website that looks like this as soon as we start scaling it smaller then iPad minis and some of the smaller tablets would display a website that looks kinda like this 
And when we start getting to uh, phone widths, then we've got websites that look kind of like this with the columns appearing below each other. And the smaller we go, they just keep going to fit until we get to 320 pixels. Once you get to 320 pixels, your screen is too small to fit our content, buddy. So um, we're gonna make our content stay exactly the same size and you will just have to use your thumb or whatever to actually maneuver around the website and try scale it um, wherever you need to go. But like I said, not many screens are smaller than 320 pixels. So we don't really have to worry about that too much. And that is all I have for you guys in this video. Uh, so if you guys like this, then don't forget to leave a like on the video below and a comment and also share this video. It's really going to help my channel grow and I will see you guys next time.